Now we go to Charlottesville. Ricky Miazon joins us, and uh, I've already given Ricky a hard time with his lid because he's a San Francisco <laughs> Giants fan. Anytime I see anything L.A., I start getting that cold, clammy feeling. Uh, Ricky, first of all, it's a pleasure having you on the, sh on the show. Uh, congratulations on all the success. I know you, you're kind of an interesting uh, story given where you started and now where you find yourself here in Charlottesville. Yeah, um, it was, uh, it's been, it's been a great journey. Uh, I loved it so far. Um, went out West and didn't really know anyone and made a ton of friends out there and decided that I, uh, I really missed the cross and wanted to, wanted to come back home. And, and that's how I kind of ended up here in Virginia, back in Virginia. So I've, uh, loved every second of being back home and being in Charlottesville. Well, again, uh, for folks that don't know, you played football at Stanford, and uh, David Shaw is a bud, and uh, he, he's one of the greatest guys on the place uh, on this whole face of the earth thing. Uh, and I've got always have respect for folks at Stanford because I always told people every time I'd go out to Palo Alto and walk around that beautiful campus, I just felt like I was smarter, even though nothing had changed other than my location. So I have nothing but props for you for number one going to Stanford and now going to another incredible academic institution at the University of Virginia. I, I would think before we get to anything with lacrosse or sports, just from your academics, uh, how would you describe mm -hmm. the comparison of Stanford and Virginia academically? Yeah, um, I would say one of the uh, it, being at Stanford was such a like shock to me because there were just so many different impressive people. Like you go around and talk to people and everyone had this like really cool, unique thing you're doing. Like my freshman year, I was a couple of doors down from a kid who had won the Google Innovation Award. So it was like, there were just so many incredible, incredible people around. Um, and it was really cool to kind of just learn from them and, and um, just kind of soak everything in from, from, from them and be in the classroom with them and, and challenge myself. So um, it was, that's definitely one of the special parts about being at Stanford is, is being around all those incredible people. And I mean, likewise at Virginia, you have something very similar. Okay, so let's get into your, your sports background. Coming out of high school, you were the number one recruit for lacrosse, and then you decide to go out west and play football at Stanford. What went into that decision-making process? Um, because you obviously had to pick one or the other, and you chose football from the very beginning. Yeah, um, I think... Well, at first it was I was playing soccer, and then it got a little too big to run around the field for for ninety minutes. So I had to try something new, and everyone wanted me to go out and play football. And I just had so much fun running around, hitting. I'm a physical guy, so so that it kind of fit my style of play. And when Stanford comes knocking for me, it's it's it was a no brainer. I wanted to use my athletic ability to get get the best education I could, and and you know, there's nothing better than Stanford. Um, so I, I took the chance. I took the chance of myself and went out west. And um, it was, you know, I, that was the best decision I could have made. Okay, so then you make the decision. I'm going to go back to playing lacrosse, right? What you, what you were first doing, in high, you were such a great recruit in high school. Um, and then obviously you chose the football path. But, but in going back to lacrosse, first of all, why did you decide to do that? And also, how, how often did you hone your lacrosse skills while you were doing the football? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think part of it has to do with just like, you know, growing up as a little kid, lacrosse was the sport I played. You know, I always dreamed about playing on, on championship weekend and, and winning that national championship. So when it came time to make this decision, um, I just, I, I really, you know, I, I would regret it if I didn't at, at least get a chance to play some college lacrosse. Um, and that's what, what kind of went into it. Um, but yeah, I, I so happy to be back out in the lacrosse field. Um, yeah. Ricky, you know, I, I love the fact that you played football and now play lacrosse. And I'm going to tell you why I say that. Because I don't know anything about lacrosse before I started doing this show, right? <laughs> and the more you watch it, the more you've got an appreciation because it's really a combination of multiple sports, which is so cool. And you just talked about the physicality. And the first couple of times I ever watched lacrosse, I would tell my buddies, you know what? If a guy like LeBron James – or any other NFL tight end decided, you know what, for fun, I'm going to take up lacrosse. I'm like, I tell my buddies, they would totally dominate. I mean, the physicality, the size, the speed, 
And I'm sitting there watching highlights of you just running over people with a <laughs> smile on your face, like, hey, man, this is easy. Right? And I got a stick and a ball, too. Let's go. And, and so it's kind of cool for me to watch you play because it kind of goes back to, again, with the little I know about the sport, then I'm like, hey, you know what? The, the certain prototypical athlete now, if they ever got ingrained and, and took over lacrosse, I mean, the sport would be unbelievable. And I'm not knocking yeah. who plays it now, but yeah. just the, the physicality of what a prototypical tight end in the NFL or on big-time college football teams looks like. I mean, you stick them on a lacrosse field with an attitude, watch out. I mean, that would be a deadly yeah. combination. Yeah. And I think, you know, part of it also, like, the, the hardest thing about the transition is definitely – for me playing offense, it's getting back that, that muscle memory of, of, you know, catching and shooting and, you know, getting away from double teams and stuff like that. That's definitely been the hardest part, but I've, you know, having played four, four to five years of college football, my athleticism is there. So that's not something I needed to work on. It was more so the IQ and the stick skill side of, of getting back into it. I'm assuming Lars Tiffany recruited you a little bit when you were coming out of high school. I'd assume you're a Virginia native and you were one of the best recruits in the entire country. How did that relationship come back into play when it was time for you to come back home and come to Virginia? Yeah, I actually, so I met Lars, I actually went to Virginia on a football visit and they, you know, during the visit, I went over and spoke to Lars for a little bit because I think that was one of his first, first years actually getting to Virginia. Um, and got a chance to like talk with them there, um, but then revisiting it around, it was it was it was kind of interesting to to get to know him again and some of the guys on the team who I had known a couple years back, who I played lacrosse with, kind of rekindling those relationships. Um, but I always I always knew when I when I made this decision, the first place I wanted to be was in Virginia, and they were you know they were they were happy to take me on board. You know, your dad was an Olympic sprinter. I, I got to figure the uh, athletic DNA in your family has got to be pretty good, right? And, and so what kind of conversations uh, was that like growing up, given the fact that your dad being so athletic and you obviously said, hey, this looks like a lot of fun? Yeah. Um, he, funny, he actually, I think when I was just learning how to walk, he would put uh, like 14-pound weights in my little baby carrier. <laughs> So he was kind of training me up from the second I could I could walk around and, and run. And then he also trained a couple of people and I would go and watch. And then eventually I just started joining in um, and it kind of took off from there. Um, you know, he he provided the formula and and but I kind of just he you know, I, I, I had the internal motivation and he just kind of let me go with it and, and help me along the way. In this whole transition period, going from obviously East Coast to West Coast, back to East Coast, closer to your family, from lacrosse to football, back to lacrosse, what have you learned most about yourself in this process? Um, that I, I, um, I'd probably say the biggest thing that I've learned is just how to deal with adversity, um, especially going into my sophomore and junior year and having back-to-back season-ending injuries. Um, and honestly, coming back, I feel like a better athlete. I've just learned, um, you know, to, to deal with that adversity and understand that, you know, it's just a, tra- you know, when, adv- when adversity strikes, it's just a little traffic jam and you got to continue to prepare yourself for when that traffic's over and you got to keep going. So, you know, that's definitely the biggest thing that this whole journey is, has taught me. All right. I want to go back to the whole Stanford, Virginia thing, because it's two of my favorite places in the United States, <laughs> Palo Alto and Charlottesville. Uh, what's the one thing that Charlottesville needs that Palo Alto has? <laughs> Ooh, let's see. Probably, I'd probably say consistent weather. Stanford was 70 and sunny every day, and I love that. <laughs> Charlottesville's uh, a little up and down. Uh, I could use a little bit more consistent weather, but you can't have everything. How about the other way around? What, what, what's something that Palo Alto could really stand uh, getting a gift from Charlottesville about? Uh, Charlottesville is just a really like homey and college, like you, it, you really get a sense of like a college town being in Charlottesville. Um, and it, w- it wasn't quite the same in Palo Alto, even though Palo Alto is beautiful. Um, I definitely get the college town, uh, vibes from Charlottesville, which I love. 
You have such a cool story. You do all yeah. this sports stuff. But, yeah. And I know we started the show. Pac was giving you a hard time about your hat and how it's a fashion statement. Yeah. I know the New York, L.A. thing. And, and it's you're yeah. clearly into fashion. <laughs> One thing I learned about you is that you also like to sew. Yeah. Oh, tell us yeah. about that hobby that you've picked up when and why and how. Um, This was, I think, last summer. We just like being being a. Uh, like in, in the summer, you have to be on campus for, for training and there's a lot of free time. And uh, I was always into fashion, but like it's honestly expensive. And you look at these things, you're like, oh, I feel like I could kind of make that. Like, I feel like I could do that myself. <laughs> um, and I just kind of started watching YouTube videos in my free time. And it was honestly a really good way to kind of like get my mind off of, you know, the stressors of football and athletics. It's just like, you have to be really methodical and patient and I'm not the most patient person. So definitely help me with that. Um, and it's just something I do to get my mind off, off of everything. What's the coolest thing you've put together that you've actually worn? Uh, I'm wearing one right now. My, uh, okay. patches on my, on my jacket. It's probably one of my favorite things. I um, love that. Oh so yeah. <laughs> I see a brand in the future. Uh, maybe, never thought of maybe I got to hone my skills. A brand? Hone my uh, skills the, in a little bit more, but uh, we'll see. Well, Ricky, the first thing you could do is take one of those patches and stick it right on top of that L.A. on that hat, man, and increase the value like yeah. by 50%, just like that as a San Francisco <laughs> Giants fan. I, I, you know, it, I can cringe just looking at that L.A. on you, man. You, you're too classy a dude to be wearing that L.A. hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him give you a hard time. Don't let him give you a hard time. Listen, I'm just jealous. I'm just jealous that you've lived the Palo Alto, Charlottesville life and uh, still living <laughs> vicariously through what you guys are doing with uh, lacrosse. So keep up the great work. You are a very, very cool story. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thank you guys for having me on. You got it. Best Good of luck. This weekend. You got it, man. Take care of yourself.